all fall sports until after January 1st. Uh, the article from Ben Kirkoval and Matt Norlander over at CBS Sports says the Ivy League has canceled all sports for the fall and will reevaluate whether to allow athletes to compete after January 1st, 2021. Conference sources told CBS Sports' Matt Norlander an official announcement from the league is expected Wednesday evening. Now, the 2020 college football season, this doesn't have anything to do with FBS. It does affect one FBS game, and that is Princeton at Army on October the 10th. That one is no longer happening. So now Army is down to 11 games. Navy was facing some FCS school that decided not to play already, and they are down to 11 teams. So we've got some schedules here and there. I don't believe Colgate is playing this year. So the Patriot League, some of their schools are playing, some are not, whatever. Syracuse is down to 11. I mean, we'll... We'll figure this out as we go. OB Matt jumps in on YouTube. He said, what's up? What is up, Matt? Uh, this is going to be incredibly interesting to see what happens. The Ivy League was the first conference to cancel their basketball tournament back in March. And that led to a whole bunch of others. Everybody else ended up canceling their conference tournaments, which led to the NCAA tournament canceling, etc. The issue here is that the Ivy League does not play in the playoffs. In FCS, they don't really affect anybody else. So if they move to the spring and just play a round-robin, 10-game schedule, doesn't matter. It That doesn't affect anything. They can be their own standalone thing. None of their income, none of their money has anything to do with football. So I think that we are not going to see this affect FBS the same way that it did with basketball back in March. Chris, do you feel the same way? I don't think the Ivy League affected anything in basketball either, by the way. Rudy Gobert shut down sports. Yeah, you are The NBA shut down sports, not the Ivy League. The NBA shut down, and then the Ivy League shut down, and then the tournament shut down. Well, the Ivy League shut down days before the Rudy Gobert thing. That's fine. But it was the Rudy Gobert thing. We were going with the tournament after the Ivy League shut down, and then Rudy Gobert happened, and the NBA said, we got to stop, and then everybody else said, we got to stop, and the whole country stopped. The Ivy League didn't. They might have been the first, but nobody did it because they did it. And once again, I said this Monday, if they choose to play or not to play, it will affect zero in if the Power Five schools do the same thing. Well, you, if it, they choose on, to not play, it ain't because the Ivy League chose to not play. I, I, I will promise say this. you that. I will say this. If you think that there are school presidents that are not paying attention to what the Ivy League is doing, you're kidding yourself. I know, well, so I then I'm kidding myself because I don't think the school presidents of the SEC schools give one damn what the Ivy League presidents are doing. That's the SEC. They schools. a don't have the endowments that those Ivy League schools have. They need that money. They're no, from this is true. Ass states, every one of them. You're talking about just SEC. I, I know for a fact. That's all I care about because the big schools are all about their own conference, Gary. Agreed, but I the don't Big care Ten. About anything else? The Big Ten. There are a ton of Ivy League guys that are in positions of leadership. Inside, I mean, the the president chancellor of Michigan is a Brown guy. So that's okay, you know, that's, so he went to Brown. That's fantastic he, that he's a Brown guy. He is over a Big Ten school. Yes. All right. And he is going to do what the Big Ten commissioner tells him to do. I, I, I believe that he is going to do what he is told to do. Because you, you the might amount be of right. money they have. Yeah, it, it, this is a big-time money deal for the FBS schools. That, that's the biggest issue. And, and more so the Power Five schools than even Group that, of Five. That's what I'm talking about. I, know, so, I can't speak for every school. In the, I can't speak for all 130 of them. Okay? But I'm going to tell you this. And, and listen. It might be the Power 5 schools don't play football. I'm telling you, it won't be because the Ivy League chose to not play football. And and I do this agree with you. This is not going to factor into anything they do because they are not financially set up anywhere close to the way the Ivy League is set up. And football matters so much more to them due to finances and everything else that brings money in for their school. Now, let's... Uh, Matt said you still have a pullback to where you went to school. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, we 100% agree there. Uh, Damian jumps in. He said, what's up? Nice to see you, Damian. Let's talk about what this actually could mean, which we've talked about this a number of times already. 
and the schedule flexibility that we will possibly need in 2020. Now, this doesn't affect a whole lot of FBS. I mean, there's only one team that had scheduled an Ivy League team this season, and that was Army. However, what this could do is lead to other FCS conferences, et cetera, that have decided we don't have a whole lot of money invested in this thing. We're not going to get a whole lot from playing this. Why don't we just push back to the spring as well? Other FCS conferences and whatnot could do that. In that case, Mike Campion jumps in on YouTube. What's up? How you doing, buddy? If you drop off enough of these buyout games, right, are we going to be able to get to a point where they start allowing the schedule flexibility to open up to where you get some more regional matchups, to where you get more Power 5 matchups that you would rather see? I think this is the first step in that happening, more so than the first step in no college football in the fall. There's a really good chance that we're going to see schedules completely different. I don't know that you caught this or not. It was sent to us in a group um, just seconds before we went live. You were doing technical things to get us going live. <laughs> no, I'm I playing on my phone. <laughs> and, and, uh, and Sam Walters, who will be on with me tomorrow, uh, because Gary is going on vacation. Yes. For those that don't uh, know, I won't be here the next two days. Chris well, is running the show. And I won't somewhere. be going live because I don't know how to use technology. You're glad you're getting any podcast at all. That's because <laughs> Gary's a good teacher and Sam is very tech savvy. Um, but uh, he sent us a link that the Big Ten just had, just sent out. They are going to a 10-game only, uh, conference-only schedule. For the 2020. Big Ten? The Big Ten just announced that? It appears to be happening is the quote. All right, hold on. I'm pulling it up. Tom uh, Tom Dahart. Uh, Dean Hart. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay, okay. So here, let me read this uh, this actual tweet. Yeah. According to Dom, Tom Dean Hart, uh, the Big Ten appears headed to a 10-game conference-only schedule for 2020. And here's the story. So I could see a lot of that happening before we get into sports, before we get into this thing. But I don't see wow. I don't see the conferences just quitting altogether because the Ivy League quit. And I don't think that they're going to this type of thing because of what the Ivy League did either. I think they're doing it because it's the best way to do what they're wanting to do. So that means the schedule's about to get thrown way the hell up in the air, and everybody's got to be flexible and change. And, and that's fine. That's part of it. What did we talk about? I'm willing to be as flexible as I have to be as long as it means getting sports this fall. That's it. Yeah. I don't care what it costs me. I don't care what they have to give up. I just want I just want to watch my team play. I want them to be safe, and I care about the kids. God, I care about the kids. I fight for them more than anybody else, and I fight against the biggest monster that keeps them back more than anybody I know. It. I, so I want it to be safe, and I don't want anybody to get hurt, and I don't want anybody to get sick, okay? But I also really want sports. And if it means we have some weird-ass season, I'm not going to be upset. I'm also not going to be upset at all that these big schools don't get to play FCS schools. Yeah, of course not. I hate. I talk about it every year when we get into the week. We'll be in week five of a season, and there'll be 130 teams playing one another, and lo and behold, we got two good games to watch. How the hell that happens, I don't understand. Yeah, uh, Mike. But it happens all the time because big boys like to beat up on little boys. Well, it's, it's, a, no it's a buy game. That. Like it, that's a, there's, it's a 12-game schedule. Which I think I in the future, I hate it. I, I loathe it. I, you want to help support that smaller group? Throw a bunch of money in a pile. Throw that two million dollars. Everybody just puts two million dollars in. They were going to pay for a win and a slush fund, and have it trickle down to all the all the smaller schools. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm with and you. And play somebody real. Uh, I think we're eventually going to move to a ten game schedule because I think the conference or the playoff expansion and whatnot. I I think that that's what we're going to move to. But either way. Uh, I, I'm going to let you guys talk about this Big Ten thing tomorrow because they're having a big meeting tomorrow. Well, we, we'll have more information tomorrow, so I'm actually really glad I'm getting a Big Ten guy on because yeah, they'll they'll have information that we don't have now. Yeah, that it, was just a blurb. It so. says uh, it says this fact appears to be coming into focus. Non conference games will be punted, and the Big Ten appears headed for a ten game conference games only schedule. Now uh, that changes a lot of things because how many SEC schools were lined up to play Big Ten schools? I don't think a ton. But uh, the big like they had cross games with people, and then my other yeah, question is Oregon, this, Oregon. If everybody chooses to do this, what happens to Notre Dame? 
Do they just say, hey, we are kind of in the ACC in basketball. Yeah. Can we be lumped in with your family for football? Well, they'll they'll get some of their football stuff, I think, and then they will. Well, end not up, if every com- if every Power Five conference says we're going to do the same thing, <laughs> then they won't because well, they don't I, have a Power Five conference. Agreed, but the ACC only plays eight conference games. Yeah, uh, so they could fit them in. Yeah, they could they could fit that in. I, I they don't could, they know. They could just be an ACC school, but then do they compete? So let's say they compete for the ACC title. Okay, so let's say they're in the ACC 10, whatever conference, and they win their side of it. They look up, they don't have to play Clemson, and they run the table in the ACC. Do they get to play for the ACC title? Well, Do they get no, the Notre ACC Dame, Notre Dame does TV play. Money? <laughs> Notre Dame does play Clemson this year. So, uh, well, okay, but but it, in, but in they, my hypothetical world. My question is this: Do they get their share of the ACC TV money? Probably not because they've got their own TV schedule. Like they've got their own their own stuff. Uh, let me let me jump into the chat right quick because it's yeah. firing off. Uh, Mac, uh, Mike said, "I do think it's going to be only conference schedules to keep it somewhat regional." Uh, he said, "I was looking forward to the Ohio State Oregon game, 100 percent, and and a lot of people were right. A lot of people were looking forward to North Dakota State and and Oregon." So, uh, La Punta del Tren something said Del Con La Silla on Twitch. It's nice to see some new people on the Twitch. We agree. Uh, hola, amigo. Mike Campion said, I 100% agree, no FCS. Uh, Matt said, it's boring to watch a big FBS school play an FCS school. Usually it's a beating and not even fun to watch. 100%. It's just, it's it's extra it's work awful. for... It's just awful. Yeah, it's extra work for your, your second and third teamers. That's, that's all it is. Oh, uh, it's unbearable. Your coaches yeah. love it. I, there's no doubt the coaches love it. Oh, absolutely. Well, it Outside depends on the, the school. that love it, nobody else likes it whatsoever. The fans hate it. It's a tax on season ticket holders. It's a preseason game. You gotta pay. Yeah. You, you gotta pay the full boat for it too. You don't get a discount, and and it just sucks. The only things that can come out of it really are bad. Like that's the only thing that can cut because you can deal with injuries. You, you can upset, deal with whatever. Somebody get hurt. Yeah, and and both of those are no good. And if you win it, you were supposed to win it. I mean it. And if you don't win by enough, if you beat them by 27 and not by 32, yeah. then somebody in the playoff committee is going to be like, maybe that defense isn't really as good as we thought they were. Well, it's like uh, it's Alabama against the Citadel in 2018 or whatever, where Alabama and them were tied at 10 at the half. And Alabama won 50 to 10. 50 to 10 but yeah. So, but they were tied at 10 at the half. So, of course, it's, oh, and what's wrong meme, with Alabama? And that yeah. meme went, went viral. I yep. mean, it just went everywhere. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, it did. Yeah, you're right. It's, it, I it's a mess. Loathe, it's loathe of these things. I my, loathe. There's Matt, enough bad teams in big conferences that you can just beat the hell up on them. Okay, everybody has a Rutgers or a Vanderbilt, and you just go kick the shit out of them. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, Matt said, if the big school wins, it's the well you should have won, and if the FCS school loses, they get railed. Mike said, might get lumped into the ACC or the Big Ten for regional. Uh, talking about Notre Dame. Damian well, said, the Big Ten because the Big Ten's got 14 teams to figure out. Uh, I don't yeah, think they'll get lumped in with the Big Ten. Uh, Damien said, I don't see why the college sports don't just do a league tournament like the major sports do instead of having all these conferences. Um, I don't know what I, that would look like. I don't know either. Uh, Mike said, Notre Dame has hey, the NBA I'm stuff. open to all ideas of changing up yeah. the way college football is done sometimes. I, listen, I'm very much an outside-the-box thinker. If you ever want to hear me talk politics, local politics of how to handle schools and things like that, I got some kind of crazy shit that I think. It ain't all right, and it's all going to come with problems, but it's also fixing solutions, fixing problems with solutions that nobody in the world that I know of ever talked about or thought of. Uh, Mike said Notre Dame has the NBC contract. Yeah, that's they've got their own I, I, so independent here's television the contract. So. I, I get that, but does that mean if they're only going to get their home games, and now if they've got to mix in with the schedule, they were originally going to get you know nine home games, and now they are only going to get five home games. Does NBC lose money on that deal when they play on the road? Are they going to be able to broadcast some of those games on NBC? Or that's my question of how the TV is going to work. That's uh, it's not as simple as as because you're joining a network that already has a television contract. Yeah. Okay. I, and you have a television contract. Are, are we going to simultask both games? Are we going to like every one of their games? Can we can we get it? This is what I've always wanted in my life. Can can I get the NBC coverage on one channel and the exact same being covered on another, so I can pick who I listen to watch? Yeah, I mean that. Yeah, that'd be nice. 
That who knows? If football can if the NFL could give me two options to listen to every game, I would be the happiest person alive. Um. Oh, Ben said it's cool when the FCS team wins though, or when the G five team beats the P five team. Yeah, we all remember App State over Michigan and and stuff like that. So of course. We enjoy yeah, those. The, the, that, that, but there that's the point. The, problem. the yeah. one time out of 4,000 that it happens, we remember, and it's so exciting. That means we go through 4,000 other opportunities of pure hell to hope that we get that one thing. Well, and I mean, to be fair, like North Dakota State has more wins on the road in the Big 12 than Kansas has over the last six years or whatever. So, I mean, okay. it, but we're not talking give about me, Kansas here. Give me a here. Rutgers stat. Give me a yeah. Vanderbilt stat because that doesn't matter at all. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. How many of um, those are against Kansas? Because I bet at least three of them are. Probably a couple at least. Uh, but, uh, no, I don't I don't know that North Dakota State's actually played Kansas. But they've, Maybe they've they beat have Kansas it. State. I don't know. North Dakota State's good. App State's good. They yeah. need to come up to the different level. We need to, some conference, pick them up. Let's go. Yeah, exactly. Uh, along with that, by the way, we're, we're going to stay on uh, college football momentarily. Just a slight blurb doesn't actually mean a whole lot. Northwestern and Wisconsin moving their game away from Wrigley. We wanted to make sure we hit on that for our West Lot Pirates boys. We'll, we'll cover that tomorrow, yeah. too. I told, I told Sam specifically I didn't think we were going to hit that today. Okay. So we'll try to get in the nuts and bolts of what that means. But here's the thing, though. I, my question is, is if they're only going to a 10-team schedule, I guess they want to nix that because they're probably looking at doing no fans or limited fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's going to be at Ryan Field. It's, if they do the Wrigley Field thing, they really want to make sure they can sell that out. Oh, yes, 100%. So that's going to be a special thing. So, okay. <laughs> Mike said North Dakota State might be an FBS uh, team soon. And then Trey Lance for Heisman from Ben. Yeah, 100%. I'm all about it. All about it. All right, let's move off of the college sports. Let's dive into the NFL. <laughs> 